Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella. I'm gonna take my glasses off so they're not so glary. Uh, today is the 12th. Yeah, it's Monday, October 12th. And I, took, I got up this morning and I did my workout and took a shower so my hair's all wet. <laughs> and I sat down and I finished sewing bags. I only had, um, I don't know, maybe like 10 left to piece together. So they're all piled back here. These are the ones I finished 100% yesterday, except the drawstrings. These ones, I have to um, trim all the strings off of it, you know, from sewing. And then I'm going to run the drawstrings and get them ready to have photos taken for the update tomorrow. I'm going to have an update tomorrow, Tuesday the 13th. <laughs> um, in the evening, probably around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time again. So I have the rest of today and most of tomorrow to finish up these bags. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> But uh, it's just going to be drawstring bags in the shop this time. And then this weekend when Devin's off, I'm going to go to Joann's and do some shopping for some um, like character prints and maybe some Christmas and winter prints. Because, I mean, it's already the, almost the middle of October, so Christmas shopping should be happening. <laughs> We're almost done with our Christmas shopping because we do it real early. But, um, you know, if you have yarny people in your life, you want to gift uh, Christmassy themed... Um, bags to now would be the time to buy them <laughs> because I I will be sewing through October and November but I'm thinking December I probably won't sew much at all I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna sew at all because I say that every year and then I end up making like one last update right before Christmas but um you know I want to spend time with my family relaxing and stuff so I'm not gonna be sewing a lot towards the holidays <laughs> anyways that's the good news for this video there's another reason I wanted to make this video Because I've been seeing a lot of people make videos talking about how October is awareness for breast cancer, which it is. And that's great too, of course. <laughs> but um, October is also another awareness month that a lot of people aren't aware of. <laughs> and I actually wasn't until this year. But October is also infant and pregnancy loss awareness month. Um, so it's anyone who's had a miscarriage or a stillbirth or their baby died of like SIDS or something like that. And I guess trigger warning, I'll put that in the front of it, uh, of the video, that it's back update and trigger warning. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I wanted to talk about that just a little bit because I, you know, I never knew October was that. I always just associated it with uh, breast cancer. Because around here, you know, like all of our businesses have the, uh, what's it called, walk for life or whatever, every, around October. Not, probably not this year. <laughs> but where they do like 5K walk and run to raise money. And you can buy t-shirts, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> I'm sure everybody does that. But, um, so I never knew what it was also for, uh, pregnancy and infant loss. Because, you know, I've never experienced that. And, um, so I didn't know much about it. <laughs> uh, but this year, early this year, Devin and I decided to, uh, try to ha add to our family. We wanted to have another baby to, you know, just have another baby, <laughs> like people do. <laughs> and, um... I was real reluctant for years. I was perfectly happy with just Jesse, and uh, I was always trying to lose weight, so, you know, having a baby would be counterproductive in that area, <laughs> but um, we finally just talked about it a lot and decided to go ahead and start trying, so we did, and we did get pregnant, but it ended up in a miscarriage, and then we tried again and got pregnant again, and then it also ended up in a miscarriage. I didn't want to talk about that before now because, um, you know, it's painful, <laughs> obviously. But uh, I realized since this happened that a lot of people aren't aware of um, support for this. And a lot of people keep it secret that they lose babies um, in any part of pregnancy. And uh, Devin and I are definitely the kind of people who believe that a baby is a person from the moment it's conceived. Um, if, you know, if not actually a talking and walking around person, it's a spirit. A spirit has been made, you know, at that moment. It's been sent here as a future person. <laughs> that's how we view it. I know a lot of people don't view it that way, and that's fine. You know, you're allowed to believe what you want to believe. But when you believe that, it hurts no matter what point of the pregnancy you lose it. Because it was going to be a person, and then it wasn't. So it's really hard to deal with it, you know, obviously. I'm sure for people who don't believe that, it's still painful. Uh, I don't know, but um, 
I just noticed that a lot of people keep it a secret and I think that's weird that you wouldn't um, want people to know that that laugh was there and that that you're grieving for it so I kind of I decided that I want people to know that you know our family and our close friends knew but uh, we didn't like publicize it we didn't make Facebook posts and <laughs> I didn't talk about it on here even though a lot of people guessed <laughs> which is I think it's kind of weird that people were guessing what was wrong with me this year um, because I know my personality changed a lot <laughs> since the beginning of this year to the rest of this year but um, it's just because I was grieving and suffering you know and um, I feel like it's getting a little bit better <laughs> obviously not perfect because I'm trying not to cry while making this video <laughs> but um, I just feel like uh, you know everybody knows October is breast cancer awareness month but hardly no one knows that it's also pregnancy and infant loss month and I just think it's weird that it's a stigma for women to keep it private that stuff like this happened like we're not supposed to mourn publicly it and uh, I think that's just messed up because if you had a newborn baby that died everybody would feel sorry you know and everybody would know and support you and all this stuff so what's the difference between supporting someone from losing a, a one minute old baby as opposed to one that they were looking forward to because you know when when you find out you're pregnant and you want to be pregnant you start planning instantly Devin and I did we were already talking names and what we were gonna do for it, how we were preparing for it. We were, you know, trying harder to get a house because we were thinking, you know, we're in a tiny apartment, we can't fit two kids in here plus us. I lost my train of thought because I have to keep stopping <laughs> to collect myself. But um, I just wanna spread awareness for it because I suffered for a while in silence. Only a couple people knew right off the bat. And what's funny is the people who, uh, they know who they are, especially if they're watching this. The people who knew first, um, I'm not super close with, you know, I have made a lot of friends through YouTube that I am really close to, and there's some that I'm, you know, friends with, but we don't, like, talk all the time and all that, but, um, the reason they knew is because, uh, I was supposed to go meet them, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had to tell them why I couldn't, well, I didn't have to, but, you know, I didn't want to say I'm not coming, <laughs> because that would be rude, but, um, you know, it's just... I don't even know what I'm trying to say anymore <laughs> but um when the first one happened the first one was really horrible I mean they were both were horrible but the first one was really really horrible uh pain wise and everything and, you know mentally it was really hard the second one is gonna sound bad I guess but I was expecting it to happen again so I don't feel like it was as traumatic as the first one but the, f the first one was physically a lot more horrible I remember the night before the first one uh, I was asleep <laughs> and I had a dream and it was a weird dream you know I didn't know anything about what was gonna happen the next day obviously um, and in the dream I was standing in like a kind of like a wooded area but was also fieldish it was like a, a sparse wooded area <laughs> um, and all of a sudden out of nowhere this big like black cloud came rolling in and started to surround me and the cloud was like you see in movies when a, a volcano erupts or i guess in real life i've never seen a volcano erupt but like you know there's like this big black cloud comes rolling down the mountain and it covers everything i, I know that's ashes and smoke and stuff but in this dream it was just like a big black fog and right as soon as it covered me completely is when i woke up and it terrified me because I, you know i'm the kind of person who believes in dreams as uh precursors to things sometimes and because I've experienced it a lot in my life I've had dreams that ended up becoming true and uh by the way I'm gonna insert this I'm a Christian so <laughs> uh yeah I'm just inserting that so that you know that that's where that comes from because it's talked about the bible but anyways um and then the next day is when that happened and it was horrible because Devin was at work and I was home alone with Jesse and um when it started happening I knew what it was and, uh, you know, we talked about it and we decided that we're going to keep trying. Um, so we kept trying and then we found out we were pregnant again. And then it happened again, but sooner. So, um, like I said, I was kind of expecting it to happen. I don't know, I just had that feeling. But in between those two periods of time, I was still having that same dream over and over again. But every time I would get covered up in that dark cloud, um, I would wake up. And to me, I interpreted that as, especially the, the night before and then when I had the first one, and then I thought about it, 
I was thinking that that was like my warning or my, you know, my first thought of something bad is about to happen. And it's going to engulf me in like a darkness that I'm going to be stuck in for a while. Because, you know, it's a big black cloud. You can't just walk out of it. <laughs> so, um, as, in between the first one and the second one happening, that's what I thought about it while I kept having this dream. So, um, and it scared me, the dream, every time I woke up and it was super scary and I had a hard time going back to sleep. And, um... So after the second one happened, we decided to keep trying to have another baby, and so far nothing's happened. <laughs> I haven't gotten pregnant again, and it had, you know, so obviously I haven't had another loss. But I did go to the doctor, and we had to do a bunch of tests, lots and lots of tests, lots of blood work. The blood work was crazy expensive. Um, the blood work that they did, because they did every test known possible, I feel like, <laughs> and it was $3,500, but luckily our insurance paid the majority of that. <laughs> so, but, um... Just crazy amount of tests. I was put on some medications. Found out that I have two uh, disorders that I'm not gonna talk about because I don't want to. <laughs> but two different things that's wrong with me. That is why this is happening. So I'm being treated for both of those. And uh, they basically said to just keep trying, you know. And uh, I'm supposed to contact them if I get pregnant again. Blah, blah, blah. All that stuff, you know. Just infertility crap. <laughs> but um, recently, I've been having uh other dreams <laughs> where it's me in the dark when i first have the dream i'm in the darkness and it's getting lighter and lighter it's not lifting completely <laughs> but it's going from a dense dark fog that i can't see anything to a lighter gray fog <laughs> where i can start to see the trees and the, the ground and stuff again so in my mind i'm interpreting that as things are getting better <laughs> And I, I do feel a lot better than I did months ago. <laughs> uh, I've processed a lot. I've, I've delved deeper into my religion. And um, I've talked about it a lot to people I'm friends with. I haven't went to therapy, but just because I haven't wanted to. <laughs> I'm not one of these days, who knows. But um, right after the first one happened, I made a little, I found a little crochet pattern and I made it. And then recently I made another one for the second one because once the second one happened, I was just kind of disassociated from it. And I didn't want to think about it, you know. So, um, and I'll link this little pattern below. It's really quick and easy. They're two different colors because I thought that I was using the same yarn, but I wasn't. Um, but I made these just as little reminders of the two that we lost. We didn't know what their gender was because it was, uh, too early. But, uh, so that's why it's pink and blue. I'm imagining if you knew what the gender was, you could just do it the solid color. But, um, I found this little pattern. It's a free pattern. And like I said, I'll link it below if you're interested. But I made these. I'm probably going to use these as Christmas ornaments. I'll probably put them together and um, put a little card on the back of it with the dates. And uh, it'll just be a reminder every year of the two that aren't here anymore. And uh, that helped me. I told Devin when I first made the first one. I got something in my eye. <laughs> I told him that it's helping me process what's going on just I had it hanging up back there actually so I could look at it all the time and it just it comforted me somehow I don't even know how but it just made me feel better I guess because it was acknowledged that it was there which is the whole reason I'm making this video so that no one acknowledges early pregnancy losses it seemed like <laughs> and um I think it should be acknowledged I mean for the people who have the thinking of that was a baby um so that's what I wanted to talk about today was just that it's also Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month, not just Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And actually the 15th of this month, which is I think Thursday, is Pregnancy Loss Awareness Day or something like that. <laughs> Let me look at my notes. I wrote a note. It's Pregnancy and Loss Awareness Day, yeah. And um, at that day at 7 p.m., you're supposed to light a candle in remembrance of the babies you've lost or people you've known lost. Um, or just people, you know, you know that people all over the place lose babies all the time. And it's just like a way for everybody to come together and remember the ones that were lost. So I'm definitely going to be doing that on Thursday. But, um, some facts <laughs> is one out of four pregnancies end in miscarriage, which is a really scary number because, um, you know, I, when I had my first loss, it was only my second pregnancy ever. Jesse was my first. And, uh, and then my third pregnancy ever was also a loss. And one out of 160 ended in stillbirth. 
and um, that's a horrible number too. Uh, pregnancy loss at any moment and you know child loss obviously once they're born is just horrible <laughs> and people need support from that even if they act like they're okay they need support <laughs> but um i just want to help bring awareness to that and i do have a foundation ironically enough that i supported last year through my craft fair um and it's called the paisley foundation and they lost their daughter and they are a foundation that raises money for families who have pregnancy loss up to three years of age lost losses through um SIDS or other you know illnesses and then just miscarriage um it's local to me but I'm sure every, there's organizations like that everywhere so uh, I'm gonna link their information below if you feel um like it you could donate to them or you could find one in your local area to donate to and uh yeah, I don't know what else I want to say. I just wanted to, I wanted to bring up awareness for it, but I also wanted to let people know what was going on with me this year because even though I cried a lot during this video, it's just because I'm talking about it to someone. Um, I'm actually dealing with it a lot better now than I was when it first happened. <laughs> and um, I know there's going to be like a, a weird um, comment section <laughs> of a lot of people, you know, apologizing and stuff like that, um, you know. From, for it happening, uh, which I'm expecting, which is fine. <laughs> um, I don't know when I will read the comments from this video, but uh, I know that this video will probably get some thumbs down because a lot of people don't like when I come on here and talk about real life things, <laughs> which is weird because no catchy name, crochet, and life. But, um, and a lot of people don't like seeing uh, things that trigger pain, which I understand, but things that trigger pain need to be talked about because uh, there are a lot of people out there who don't have other people to talk to and especially to talk about things that trigger pain because you know there's a lot of people who maybe only have their mom and their mom doesn't want to hear it doesn't want to hear it I don't want to hear about it and uh, people who have friends or who, who are the same way or they can't bring themselves to talk to the people closest to them so it's easier to talk to people who are further away from them which I find easier. <laughs> it's a lot easier for me to talk to people I'm not super close to about things that are painful than my close friends and family because, you know, they feel for me stronger, if that makes sense. So it's more, it's a bigger emotion, more emotional process when you're talking to someone closer to you. Um, so it's easier for me to talk to people who I'm not super close to. But um, I just, I just want to put it out there, you know, there's, the whole awareness thing. I don't even know. I feel like my, my brain is all over the place for this video. But I will link below the Paisley Foundation and I'll also link below the little pattern for the awareness ribbon. And you could also alter it for any um, any awareness thing. But it's a really cool pattern because it's like you tuck it in there to make it the shape. I thought that was neat. <laughs> but um, and also my email will be in the, the description too if you want to um, if anyone wants to email me. <laughs> um, if anyone wants to talk or whatever, I'll try to help as much as I can. But um, I want everyone to know that I'm okay. <laughs> I'm crying a lot because I'm talking about it. Um, but I've been processing it way better uh, lately. Uh, faith has helped a lot. Friends have helped a lot. Distractions have helped a lot. <laughs> I've been sewing like crazy and cleaning like crazy. I have been depressed though. I'm not going to lie about that. And I did gain weight back. <laughs> uh, earlier this year I had lost 30 pounds. And then since then I have gained 20 of that back. But I started again being healthier and focusing more on my health and uh, just trying to be more active. It's my main goal is to just stay busy. <laughs> helps me. Staying busy helps me process things. Um, because while I'm working out, I can think about things and uh, work through things myself. But, uh, yeah. So I am, I'm, I am okay. I know I cried a lot in this video, but I, I am okay. I'm just... Uh, It'll always be there, you know, I'll always, uh, I'll always remember what happened, and I hope it never happens again, but, uh, I'm more prepared for if it happens again, and, um, my, the doctors that I'm working with, luckily, I'm very lucky to have, uh, one of the best pregnant, uh, high-risk pregnancy doctors in our state is my doctor. <laughs> um, I started going there with Jesse because, you know, I was pregnant and I had heard that they were a good doctor. Turned out I ended up being high risk with Jesse. <laughs> so it was perfect anyways. Um, the doctor there, he's really nice and his midwives are 
perfect. I love the midwives. No offense to him, but I love the midwives more than him. <laughs> but um, one of them, whoops, um, I really enjoy. And uh, she always remembers who we are and she always asks about Jesse and all that. So it's nice to have uh, a doctor office that I can feel close to and protected at. And um, yeah, I feel like they're handling it well. <laughs> and uh, they were super acceptive of it because from uh research you usually have to have three miscarriages before her doctors will start treating you for infertility which is crazy um i only had the two <laughs> and when i first went to the doctor um they immediately started working on it you know they didn't tell me that i needed to wait or um anything like that about um the, the first visit was fine you know it was emotional <laughs> especially since covid you know we had to wear the masks and everything it was just a weirder experience than I guess it would have normally been but they were super supportive right off the bat and um, the worst absolutely worst thing about having miscarriages and going to LBGYN is I wish so bad <laughs> and I'm gonna put this in their suggestion box they need to have a special waiting area and a special doctor room for women who have lost babies because it was really really hard <laughs> to be in a waiting room full of pregnant women and then be taken back to a, a exam room where you could hear other women getting to hear the baby's heartbeat. That was probably one of the hardest uh, things to go through, except the actual miscarriage. But yeah, Devin did really good in keeping me distracted while we were at the doctor. Devin's an amazing guy. Very lucky to have him. But uh, yeah, we've, we've grown closer as a family the three of us since all this. I mean, we've always been super duper close. <laughs> We're definitely one of those family families that always are going to do family things. We would rather do stuff together than uh, be like on, you know, him going to do his guitar stuff and me crocheting. Although we do do that, you know, we have our times, our personal times, but we, you know, when we, when he's off, we, we would rather go to the aquarium or the parks or the zoo. And I keep meaning to buy memberships every year to the aquarium and the zoo and I keep forgetting. <laughs> but, um, that's something I want to get into so that we could go whenever we want. Anyways, um, we've, we've been doing more family things, uh, since all this. Probably staying distracted, I guess. You know, Jesse's too little to know what was wrong. It was really sad the day that I had the first one because I was, it was, the first one was way worse <laughs> physically. Um, uh, and he could tell that something was wrong with me and he felt so bad for me and I felt so bad for him for feeling bad for me. But, um he just loved on me and Devin loved on me and it was it was a bad experience but it was a good experience because I didn't have to do it alone but um we've been you know like I said we've been closer as a family and uh I've been definitely more appreciative of Jesse I realized that he is a blessing especially since the things that are wrong with me that they found out around me have always been wrong with me they're things I was born with and Jesse could not have been here because of it and somehow he slipped through the cracks and made it but um he does actually he did almost have spina bifida when he was born his uh when in the early stages of pregnancy the very early stages the most important thing going on is the spine and the brain development and what causes spina bifida is uh folic acid being able to be broken down into a big word i can't say and it's what closes up the spinal cord to make it the spinal cord and um the back and everything and kids when they're born with spinal spina, spinal bifida that didn't happen it didn't close all the way and jesse jesse's almost didn't close all the way um it did obviously but he actually has a mark on his back right above his little butt crack <laughs> from where his didn't his almost didn't close the right way and uh they told us that when he was born that that's what that was and that it was fine because his did close all the way but some babies are born with that open which exposes their spinal um cord and the fluid leaks out which is obviously bad for the human body but um i also had preeclampsia when <laughs> he was born and it was really it was really rough um you know we we were both at high risk there of losing our lives and uh then he almost had that and then to find out the stuff that I found out since then that Jesse may not, you know, he just barely made it. <laughs> and so, so I, I view him in a completely different way. You know, I was always, I always, you know, loved him more than anything in the world because he's my baby boy. But now I see it in a different way because he's more like a, a miracle boy, I guess, you know, I don't want to say anything like he's, you know, I'm not saying that he's like special because of that. Uh, he's just a regular little boy. 
but he's more special to me now. I see it very differently because he could have, uh, he could have been my first miscarriage or he could have uh, died, you know, because of the things that's wrong with me that is hereditary uh, to women, I guess. I don't, I don't guess he, yeah, he, I wouldn't have to worry about giving it to him. But, um, you know, and I found out that they were things that's always wrong with me since, you know, I was born. And then uh, my mom had miscarriages earlier in her life. She did successfully have four babies, but she did have three miscarriages uh, that she knows of because some super early miscarriages, you're not even aware of them because some of them happened before your missed period. So, uh, well, I guess I could have had more <laughs> than, than I know of. So since all this is happening is what I'm trying to say, I keep getting sidetracked and plus Devin's messaging me. So I have to keep stopping recording and messaging him. He's on his lunch break. But, um, is I, I view Jesse's life in a different way now because I realized that it's, it was super fragile and it still is. But, um, you know, I kind of lost him. So, uh, we've just, our priorities have changed this year. <laughs> uh, we've quit worrying about buying a house right away uh, because we're fine here. We quit worrying about things that we wanted, you know, um, career-wise for Devin and me and possession-wise. And we're just worrying about each other and Jesse, just family. <laughs> we're realizing what's important, what's the most important, and that's just family and being close together and building relationships that will last forever. And we've been spending more time with our extended family, my in-laws and my mom. And, uh, you know, it's just when, thing, when bad things happen, it makes you change. It makes you change. So we've changed a lot this year and uh, for the better. And, you know, it's horrible that this had to happen to make changes happen. But, um, you know, it's just, it just happens sometimes. Some things just happen. <laughs> you can't deal with them. Uh, you can't stop them. You can't prevent them. But uh, you can learn from them and change from them. And I think we've done a good job at doing that this year. I think I've said everything that I meant to say and a lot more. <laughs> I have a bad habit of blabbing. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's just about everything I wanted to say. <laughs> I know the video started off really nice and happy. Woo, back update. And then it got sad. But um, I just, you know, like I said a thousand times already, I think awareness needs to be brought up of pregnancy loss especially early pregnancy loss because it doesn't seem like an important thing to a lot of people and you know it's it wasn't an important thing to me until it happened to me i never dreamed that pregnancy loss and inf infertility would be something that i would have an issue with you know because when we decided to get pregnant the first time uh we got pregnant immediately <laughs> like with jesse um we were not ready at all we were so stupid to, to you know i don't I don't wish Jesse away, but we, we should have prepared more before we started to try to have a baby. But, you know, we had him, and we went through some rough patches financially and all that. But um, we made our way here, so we're, we're doing pretty good. But uh, I never dreamed that I would be one in four. And, uh, you know, to me, that was always something that happened to other people. Um, my mom had had miscarriages, and I had known that. But she, at the time that she had those miscarriages, she was also in an abusive relationship. So I thought, even she thought, but that's why she had miscarriages. But turns out, <laughs> she's likely got the exact same thing I do. Uh, so that's why she had miscarriages. But um, I thought having preeclampsia was bad enough because uh, statistically, you get it the first couple of pregnancies and then you're not supposed to be able to get it again. But uh, Michelle Duggar did have it with like her 17th child. <laughs> but um, so I was worried, you know, that I was, if I ever, had, if I ever did get pregnant again, I'd get preeclampsia again. I'd be on bed resting and all this stuff. I never thought that I would end up a miscarriage. Um, I learned a lot <laughs> well, this year about it. And I've said before that this year is a horrible year and it has nothing to do with COVID. And that's true because COVID was terrible when it first happened and I was terrified of it. Didn't, you know, we didn't go anywhere. And, um, as the year progressed, we realized it's not as bad as it seems. It's still bad, especially for people who, uh, have pre-existing conditions and things, but for for regular people like us, I know that sounds weird, but um, you know, uh, we have a higher risk of being better. But anyways, let's not talk about that. <laughs> uh, I'm not so stressed out about COVID is what I'm trying to say, as I am about the rest of the stuff that happened this year. This is why um, the year has flown by for me because I'm kind of, I'm just passing the days away, it seems. Um, so this year has been a hard year. It'll be a 
definitely one that we remember, not just because of coronavirus, but because of everything else that happened this year. But uh, things are already getting better for us. And I guess COVID, at least around here, COVID is way better than it was earlier this year. I know, but we live in a real sparse area, not with thousands and thousands and thousands of people. But um, I feel like the next few months are going to be a lot better <laughs> than the rest of this year has been. And uh, the holidays help. I love decorating for holidays and it brings me comfort and I'm like this close to putting up Halloween and bringing out Christmas but uh, I'm gonna wait till Halloween night like I always do um, which is only a few weeks away which is crazy okay <laughs> Devin went in from lunch so now I can record the rest of this video <laughs> but um, I said everything I think I said everything and a lot more like I said earlier I talk a lot because uh, I'm gonna stay at home right on mom the people I mostly talk to every day is my husband and my four-year-old son. So, uh, other than messaging people. Um, so, when I get to talk, it just, it just like, pours over and everything I've been holding in and wanting to talk to someone <laughs> about just, like, bleh, out everywhere. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> this this video was very emotional, but it's only because I was talking about it. Um, I want to reassure everybody that I'm okay. I'm not depressed anymore. <laughs> I was super, super depressed this summer and a lot of people noticed that from my videos. Uh, I tried to hide it, but I tried to keep making videos because I didn't want to just disappear. So a lot of my videos this past summer was faked enthusiasm and faked happiness because <laughs> it was really hard and really dark. But uh, I've perked up, which people have also noticed. <laughs> people, you guys, I can't hide anything from you. But um, you all noticed that I am in a better mood than I am. And I'm feeling better because I'm taking better care of myself now than I have this summer. I was doing so good earlier this year, but I was in a different mental place too. Um, but I'm doing better. We have we got bicycles and a little wagon, which you guys have seen in vlogs. Uh, we've been biking and I've been walking again at home and doing home workouts. been trying to eat better, but it's really hard to eat better <laughs> when, when you want all the good things. But uh, I'm working on it. And... Uh, I'm not so preoccupied now with losing weight. Like the beginning of this year, I wanted to lose weight. I wanted to lose weight. I wanted to be at my go weight before summer. I wanted to look better and feel better. But now my goal, <laughs> and I tell Devin this all the time, I'm like my goal isn't to lose weight. It's to not gain weight. That's my goal right now is to be in a mental place where I don't rely on food to comfort me. And I, I eat when I'm hungry and I work out to stay active and to keep my heart in good health because heart conditions also run in my family. So uh, my sister and my mom both have heart conditions. But um so I'm just trying not to gain weight right now. And if I lose weight, that's great. But right now, I'm, I just want to stay where I'm at uh, instead of going up. And I've been pretty good at that the last uh, probably three weeks that I've been trying. Um, I uh, Today, I'm not going to vlog because I don't feel like it. <laughs> I got to finish up all these bags, take pictures of them. And I got to figure out what to cook for dinner tonight. That's easy because as soon as Dem gets home, he needs to eat. And then we've got to go pick up Jesse. He's still at my mom's. Tomorrow we have to take him to the doctor because his head cold pretty much went away and then it came back and he, now he's complaining about his throat being sore and he's still got all kinds of drainage and stuff and it hasn't moved down. It's still just in his head. So I'm wanting, I want to take him to the doctor to see if they can give him something to uh, make his throat feel better. I know that if it's uh, a viral thing, they can't do anything about it, but uh, I, don't, I don't even know if they can do anything about it anyways. We've been, he's been eating a lot of popsicles and jellos, and uh, we've been giving him Delsum because I bought the Wa the Walmart brand cough medicine, and it did nothing for him at all. So I was like, I'm going to buy what my mom bought my whole childhood and give it to him, and that worked like that. And like, as soon as he takes it, the whole, it's supposed to be 12 hours, but it lasts like 15 hours. He doesn't cough or anything. So uh, definitely worth it to spend the extra money to get something that actually works. <laughs> but... Uh, and he's so lucky because Delsum now tastes good. And I remember growing up, it was like the worst tasting thing ever. Uh, Delsum and uh, Rubitussum or whatever. I can't remember. Like, it was so bad when I was growing up. I remember it being so bad that I would, like, refuse to take it. My mom had to, like, chuck it down my throat. <laughs> and Jesse just, like, drinks it. And he's like, hmm, that tastes good. And I'm like, you lucky little butthead. <laughs> he, he's a child when being a child is a lot easier. Although, I would never give away my childhood because... I loved growing up before the internet was a big thing. We had internet when I was like 10 or 11 is when we got it. But I had that childhood of being outside all the time and playing, you know, in our woods and in our fields and in the mud. And uh, Jesse hasn't got to do a lot of that because we live in an apartment in the middle of town. And, uh, you know, he grew up being around game systems and TV and 
devices that do everything for you. <laughs> so it's just different childhoods. And I did the phone test on him. I know I'm talking, but you know, when we were kids and we played picking up a phone, it was like this, you know, hello, because we had the, the hearing part and the talking part. Jesse asked him the other day how he answers the phone and he went like this <laughs> because he's used to smartphones. So he, he plays when he's pretending to talk on the phone like this. And you know, we grew up doing it like that. So I think that's so funny, but uh, yeah. So anyways, I wanted to leave this video on a happy note. I'm, I am happy. <laughs> I'm a lot happier now than I have been the majority of this year. And things are going pretty good for us. We're, we're going to be in this apartment for a while. <laughs> I've, I've come to the realization that we're probably going to be here for another year or two. Hopefully no longer than that. There's a small chance that we might move next year. But I'm not rushing it. I was trying to rush it so bad. I mean, we were saving money like crazy and trying so hard to move out of this apartment. But this apartment is perfectly fine for us. We've been here for four years. We might as well stay here a little bit longer. Well, three and a half years. And, um... We're lucky enough to have a ground floor apartment, so it's easier for us to get in and out of here. And it has a decent backyard. It's not perfect, but um, it's a good place, a good enough place for now. <laughs> but um, I know all things will happen in time. I'm just, I'm trying not to rush things. I'm trying not to think about too many things. I'm trying not to plan ahead. I'm just trying to let things happen as they happen. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, I'm doing the same thing with No Kitchen Name. I'm not. Uh, actively trying to make it larger like I, I was earlier this year I had like these big goals of reaching subscriber goals and uh producing more bags like crazy and you know I'm only one person I can only make so many bags and um I just I'm trying to let go of that stuff I'm just letting things happen as they happen and um I don't really care how many subscribers I have what I care about is that they're actual subscribers like people who come to watch my videos because they like me <laughs> and um they like what I talk about and stuff and that I can become friends with through YouTube and email and Facebook and my Instagram. And, uh, I don't want a bunch of fake subscribers. I don't want to go subscriber fishing and have people who don't even watch me, um, and communicate with me. That's one reason I started this channel is because I was all by myself, stay at home mom, crocheting all alone in, on my couch. <laughs> and now I can crochet on my couch while talking to people who are sitting at their couches, crocheting also. So I, I achieved that. That's what I wanted. I wanted yarny friends and now I have a bunch of yarny friends. <laughs> and um, that's perfectly good enough for me. I don't care if I ever have a million subscribers, which is a lot. <laughs> I think the only crochet or close to that is Bag of Day. Jaden Stitches just recently got 400,000. That's a lot of people. But they do patterns. So people watch them for their patterns. Um, I mean, they like them too, but you know. You get more views when you put out patterns, but tutorials suck recording. <laughs> They're really hard. And my tripod's actually broken. Jesse lost one of the screws to it. So it's actually, you're being propped up. You're on the tripod, but you're propped up by some fabric because that's stuffed under there to keep it the right way. <laughs> but I'm gonna hop off here because I have no idea how long this video is. I had to keep cutting it and it's gonna take me forever to edit it to put it all together. But I'm going to finish up these bags and get them ready to put in the shop tomorrow evening. And I hope that uh, this video was helpful for somebody. It was helpful for me because I've been holding all this stuff on my chest and I wanted to tell you guys, but I wasn't ready until recently. So uh, there it is. I'll put a trigger warning on the, after the bag update information, I'll put a little empty space of trigger warning for people. So uh, whoever doesn't want to watch it, doesn't have to watch it. But yeah, so I'm gonna hop off here now and finish up these bags and then I'm gonna crochet. I got two finished objects. Right here's my shawl. I finished it and I got an amigurumi. So I'm I'm gonna I started another amigurumi. I'm probably gonna work on it and watch some TV. Um I need to catch up on some more YouTube videos. I watched a ton yesterday and then I started watching some more rain and then I started a new show because <laughs> I'm almost done with rain. And uh yeah, so I'm just gonna relax the rest of the day and figure out something easy to make for dinner. I don't know, probably do, I guess, I think I got some spaghetti stuff in there, I'll probably do that, I don't know, we'll figure it out, <laughs> but I'll see you guys tomorrow, I will vlog tomorrow, because I gotta take Jesse to the doctor, and Devin's off work, so we'll probably do some fun stuff, I don't know, <laughs> but I'll see you guys later, bye.